Hi everybody, it's Marcy here again from Chunky Knitted Creations. This today is going to be a Christmas edition. We are going to learn how to make a Santa hat. And you could use the same pattern to make any of these hats you see here in front of me. Except for this one, because this is chunk and he doesn't wear a hat. So, let's get knitting. We're back. Let's make a Santa hat. So, we're going to do one very similar to the one I had on in the intro. Okay. But we're going to use a different color just to show you some contrast. So, Again, you'll need one skein of a dark colored yarn for your Santa hat. You can use burgundy, hunter green, or you can use the cream color that everybody's been using for stockings or red. So for this, I'm going to use burgundy. And then for the brim, I'm going to use a white sparkle yarn. Any brand you want to use will work. And, of course, you will need lighter or... You can use uh, a needle and thread, whatever you want to join your yarn when you switch colors. And a very good pair of sewing scissors that can cut through chunky yarn. And some sort of a clip to hold it together, the circle in the beginning you'll see. Okay, let's get started. We are going to need a tail of about 10 inches, so say 10 to 12 at the most. And we are going to cast on 12. Okay, so just like any other chunky yarn product, we are going to make a slip knot. Okay, pull that through and tighten it. We will do small stitches for this hat. So let's pull this back out. Barely, just barely two fingers. Okay, and we're going to cast on 12. Get that out of the way. All right, so pull your yarn through the back of your stitch. You can use anywhere from 11 to 14 stitches, but I find that 12 works really well and fits like a one size fits all. Okay, you have your chain of 12. You're going to form it into a circle and take your tail and insert it into the last loop and pull through. This is to close up our circle, okay? And then I like to put a click there hold it in place while I first start get my knitting started just make sure you don't clip and I clip the tail out of the way all right so now we are going to knit through the tops of each one of these see one two three there the top part of the stitch you're going to take your working yarn make sure you keep this tail out of the way take your working yarn find your first stitch pull a loop through the top of it so it'll be right through this is the one that we pulled our tail through and it is going to make a loop that we're going to use one pull through that one two three Should have unwound my yarn. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
11, and we already had 12. So let's count our stitches and make sure. Starting with this one here, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay? Now I will also use this for my stitch marker. Alright, so now I'm going to knit through that one. These loops that you pulled up, we're going to knit through those. Just a simple knit stitch. Okay, one, two, we're going to go all the way around again. Three. And also what you can do to make this your stitch marker, so that you know this is where you left or where you started in a row, you can clip it right on top of it so that you know to stop counting when you get there. Count my stitches as I go. And unwind some more yarn. Eight. Seven. Nine. Eleven. Now I know I've hit stitch number twelve. Completed two rows so far, and we the hat will be 10 rows, seven of them your burgundy or your red or your green, and then the last three will be white if you want to make it like the one that I had. starting to form our hat. This is the top of your hat, just so you know. And we're going to take this and cinch it close so it will be shaped like a hat when we're all done. time to switch colors. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. We've got seven everywhere. All right. Everybody lines up. Okay. So when you're going to switch colors, I've often been asked, where do you cut your yarn? Okay. I cut about a half an inch from behind the stitch okay so this is your stitch all right and in back this is where your yarn connects right you want to just leave a tiny bit just enough to come through here so that you don't see your next color and then you cut okay so we'll grab our white and bring it over see how it's kind of frayed on the edges there i want to trim some of that off so that when i go to burn i have a nice flat piece. 
Now, some people, when they burn, they light both pieces of yarn. I really only find it necessary to light one. Just push it back and make sure you can feel the plastic core, and you want to light the center of it. Torch layers work really good for this. And you'll see it catch the flame. Push them together. Hold for a minute before you touch it or you will get burned. Give it a second to adhere and then push together so you could flatten out any like sharp plastic pieces that may have formed. Okay, like that, nice strong connection. Okay, so now we're going to start our next row. Probably don't need a stitch marker for this one because we're only doing a few rows. Look how pretty that looks together. Love this color. I'm going to do three rows total of white. The first row of stitches is going to be our normal size stitches that you did here. The second row that you do after this, you want to make your stitches larger because those are what is going to be our cast off stitches. And we just need them to be larger in order to do the cast off method. So, three rows total of white. One regular row, one larger row, and the third one being your cast off row. This is the Walmart brand mainstays yarn, if you couldn't recognize it. It's not my brand that I sell, but I had some of this. All right, now we're going to the second one, okay? So we want to make our stitches, see we were doing just barely two fingers, let's make them three, okay, just for the cast off. That should be true before any, on any hat that you do, your second to the last row, you want it to be bigger. Not huge, just a little bit, so it doesn't tighten your hat too much. Doesn't that look so pretty together though, can you see that? sparkle. I love the sparkly yarn for Christmas. You can get this in silver and blue sparkle also. Ooh, a dark hunter green with a silver sparkle. Oh no! I got a little knot here. Let's fix that. And I could cut and burn it, but I'm just going to move it down because I'm only using a little bit of yarn. Excuse me while I fix this. Don't know why they would do that. I'm just going to kind of slide that knot all the way down for the end here. All right, there we go. If it gets to be too much of annoyance, I'll just cut it and burn it back together. Oops, make sure again. I'm going to undo this one because I don't like the size of this stitch. There we go. Don't be afraid to undo your work. I know it seems like a lot of work at first, but if you get through all that work and you're not happy with it in the end, it's just not worth it, right? Even if you're going to undo a few rows or half of a blanket, I mean, we all have that happen in the beginning. your stitches up make sure that they're the same height okay same when you're doing a blanket when I first started blankets I measured every single stitch then I got to where I just measured the first stitch in each row and then compared them and then after a while you just get to know oh wait okay so we've got to now for some reason this one always comes off like a little crooked and I think it's because of where we connect it there. So now we've got two rows. We're going to do our cast off method the same way you do a blanket. Oh, this little knot is driving me nuts. Sorry, everybody. Move that knot down. Should have checked that in the beginning. This will make sure I've had enough yarn to cast off.
Okay. Okay, we've got enough yarn to cast off. So we're gonna hold these two together. I think, can you see that? Let's put it at this angle. Hold them together, one over top of each other, turn them sideways. Bring your working yarn around and through. Okay? You gotta pull it through. So you've got a loop coming out the other side of those two stitches. Okay, pull it through kind of long. Bring it over top of that one. Okay. Pull through the back. Bring out another loop. Okay. Flip your hat around as you go. Okay, I'm going to do this slow so you can see it each time because casting off can be difficult for some of us. For me, it really was. <laughs> okay, so you've got this new loop that you made. You're going to pull it over top of it. Bring your working yarn through the back of both of those loops. Okay, pull it out. See how we're getting like that braided look there? Okay, pull it through again, over top. Felt a little loose. Bring it through. This cast off or this stitch was a little small, but we're still making it work. Okay, keep clipping your hat as you go. Connect your two stitches, pull through the back, over, through, pull through. We're almost to the end. Okay, flip that over, pull through, cast off. Bring every single stitch. Adjust them a little bit when we're done. Almost to the end. Now, like about three fingers big, pull it over. Pull through. Now, this is where we started when we started casting off this way. So, you're going to grab the end stitch, okay, in the top loop of it, and you pull this over. See how it blends together? Okay. Again, when you get to the last stitch, this was actually the first stitch, so it's going that way from casting off now. You want to grab a hold of it, and you could even use this smaller one if you wanted to. Okay, this one just looked like it stood up more for me, but you can use the smaller one if you want, and put this over top of it so it will blend together, and then you're going to cast off through just like you did that one, okay? And then just to tighten it a little more, I usually put another one right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn while I'm holding that. You don't need much, just about a four or five inch tail. Okay, and then I take this end, pull it through, because we don't want to make another stitch, right? Pull it right through there, through the back of it. Okay, just kind of anywhere you want. And then grab the next stitch. Pull that through so it's nice and secure. Okay? Now, you can either trim this a little bit and just weave it through, which a lot of people like to do. But I find that it kind of changes my stitches, and I don't like to do that, so I burn. So I leave that one pulled through so it's nice and uniform. I'm going to cut about right here so that I can attach it to this stitch. I kind of measure that out before I cut to where I want to burn. Light the end of this, and we're going to stick it right to that stitch. Okay. Have it bear the core plastic string inside of every strand of chunky yarn. That's what's holding these fibers together. Sometimes this stuff can really light up big, so be careful. Some people will blow out their flame. I don't recommend that. I've seen some pretty bad burns because if there is a bubble of that plastic and you blow on it, it can fling onto your hand and burn you. So I always extinguish it by pressing it against the yarn. But look at that. It's seamless. Now, I know we don't like how this kind of looks uneven. I usually wear that in the back, but that's just the way it goes. Okay. Beautiful, right? Look at that. Now we're going to close up the top of our hat. So, 
you've got your end of your yarn, it's the same way we did the slippers, your tail, you're going to go from the outside in and you're going to go through the top of every stitch again. So take this one, go out and in and pull tight. Okay, let's flip this over again. Right, you already went through this stitch, so you grab the next stitch, out and in. Now, if you're using a really thick, kind of a tougher yarn, like maybe Eternal Bliss, you want to cinch at every single stitch. Some of these yarns, you can go all the way around and then just cinch it close like a garbage bag. So, to cinch, you just grab here and tighten. See how it tightened up that part of the hat? So that this will seal up, okay? You already went through that one. Just double check. If you're not sure if you actually put a string through that stitch or not, just kind of back it out, okay? So we know we already closed up that one. And out and in. And cinch. Flip it around. You can count as you go if you're not talking like me. And just count how many you did. This is tighten that. Okay, tighten. And then you're also going to need a fur pom-pom, or you can make your own poms out of whatever color yarn, like a thinner yarn, if you want one on the top. For a Santa hat, I think it's a must. So go through every stitch, pull tight. Okay, I love the yarn scraps. Keep them off there, those fuzzies. All right. I already did that one. I think we're on down to one. Sorry, should have cleared off the white fuzzies. Okay, one more stitch to go through. All right. Look at that. Top of the hat is all sealed closed. Okay. All right. Now, to attach the pom-pom, there's a few different ways. So, first off, you want to tie this so that it doesn't come loose. I take right here, and I tie a knot at the top. A lot of people like to put it inside and then tie one. It, it's up to you. Alright, so you can either take... This is what a lot of people do. is They just leave this string here, and they put it through the little loop that comes on these. Just like I did in my slipper tutorial, All right? Pull that through. Now you want to stick your yarn down in the hole, reach inside and grab it, All right? And get your pom pom on there. See? And then you're gonna go inside, grab. This is kind of hard to see that string that you got, and just kind of weave it through the inside of the hat so that your palm stays in place. Okay, this is kind of just the simple route here. Pull it through the back side of one of your stitches, okay? Come around. Pull it through. I'm just going to show you. See, it's holding your pom-pom on nice. These, you can fluff these up with a hairdryer and they get really 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 poofy or throw them in the dryer too there you go okay so you've got that inside there you've weaved it through a couple times um, for security and then you can just keep weaving it all around if you want or you know me I'm going to cut and burn cut it off and light it Turn it to your next stitch. And there you go. Beautiful pom pom Christmas hat. One of my favorite things to wear at Christmas time. Quickly, I wanted to show you one more thing. There is this type of hat that um, some call a skull cap. You can do the same thing. This will fit really tight to your head. And you will want to use a thinner yarn like the maybe the mainstays. This is uh, Loops and Threads Cozy Blanket Yarn. Michaels used to sell this. I'm not sure if they still do. There's also uh, Eddie Bauer yarn that I'm hearing great things about that are a little thinner to make these skull caps. 
you'll do it the same exact way that I just showed you, only you don't switch colors unless you want to. Um, you will cast on 12, but you're only going to knit 10 rows up so that it'll be shorter. And you won't put a pom-pom on it. And then you've got a skull cap. Okay, if you want to make a regular everyday hat, just to match your jacket or whatever, you can get all these different color pom-poms on Amazon and at craft stores. This would be the same exact way we did this one, the same amount of stitches. And I also have for you my famous beret. I will post a picture of what this looks like on, but it kind of hangs off the back of your head. This is Hobby Lobby's Magnifa Soft Yarn, and I can post a link for you guys. And it's it can be a little bit difficult to deal with because it's kind of slippery, but it is the softest thing I have ever felt. And this has a lot of compliments on it. So you open the pom-pom for this one, you're going to get a lot of 